All right, I'd like to talk today about tapes. Um, those who followed my modular uh, advent calendar uh, saw I did a lot of things this um, Christmas. Uh, I got a few of the, all the things that I wanted to make done. Um, and one of those things that took the most time uh, was fiddling with tape recorders. So I spent one evening uh, disassembling uh, old tape recorders, uh, which I learned a lot from, but uh, that unfortunately didn't give me, those big ones didn't give me that much. I did play around with this one quite a long time, and I think I showed that on my Patreon only, that I actually got... Uh, I built, I built a few circuits, uh, one to just uh, adjust the speed of the tape uh, and then I also uh, j just a few days ago built a um, PWM circuit where I could CV control the pulse width and thereby I could make uh, it uh, voltage controllable, so a voltage controllable tape player. It's just a player. Uh, I can show that in a bit. And then I thought, I'm this series, this these videos, I, I make them so that other people can make it as well. And uh, salvaging old tape recorders where there's a thousand different different models and types and I just, it wasn't a feasible project to do. So I started to look online and I think someone pointed me to a video where someone uh, did a this one. This is a newly produced Walkman, uh, the Byron Statics. I'll put the link in the description. It's You can find it in loads of places. I This was the first thing I bought from Amazon, I think. Uh, I found it there. Um, this one is taken to, to pieces. So I bought two of these because it has a record uh, head as well, or a record function as well. So I had this thought, if I buy two of these and I take the... using all the knowledge I've learned from looking at all these other tape recorders, I could take this the voltage control circuit, put that in and put these together, two tape heads, one for record and one for play. And so I did that, that's why this one is empty because here is this, uh, <laughs> this control board or PCB from that one and the other one sits back here. So here is that with two play heads. So I can play this and uh, you will hear there comes the same signal from these two speakers. This one a few or half a second or something or depending on, on the pitch uh, before anyway, before that one. So that's what I managed. It turns out that the record function of this is totally crap. I did not get that to work any in any way. I tried them both before I took them apart uh, and I just had to scream into the microphone and then I could barely hear just a tiny tiny bit uh, when I played it back. Yeah, so many things. I. The erase head, I thought I could use the erase head as a play head, <clears throat> but it turned out that the erase head, where did I put that box? The erase head was probably just a permanent magnet uh, sitting in there. So, um, although it's nice that they produce new kinds of these and that they have a record function, I would really like the record function to work. So, now I'm down to this that I have, uh, I can, <coughs> I could 
show make a video of how to make a tape looper uh, with voltage control and all that uh, and I had that was the next that was planned to be the next day uh, with which I was planning on calling advanced noise because that's what this is really advanced noise but um, I'm a bit upset about this uh, I was so close and then just because of bad bad hardware that I didn't make someone else made bad hardware uh, that um, doesn't work and mess this up so the next step for this I guess is there is a guy he has a YouTube channel and he's also written loads of books on old radio technology and stuff like that uh, Q Tillman I, it's one of you uh, listeners or watchers who have pointed me to his uh, his information um, and that uh, he has designs for making both uh, the play the play circuit and the record circuit so probably I have to do that I have to probably make totally new circuits and then I can maybe use these I don't know these playheads also seems to be very very sensitive uh, I'll show a close-up of that as well um, how this I've used I, these q-tips I've used the top of those to really press the tape up against both tape heads or the, the, the standard tape head in each tape that you have a small pad that presses up but since I have one where the erase head is that one I had to make a few contraptions to get that to get stuck. So what this means is I'm putting this project on hiatus or I'm scrapping this. Um, it's one of those I've spent so much time, effort and money. <laughs> Bought two of these. They cost well they cost fifteen dollars each. It's not that much but I bought it and kind of immediately picked them apart. So yeah. I void warranties. I scrap this and I scrap the whole uh, advanced noise for now. I'll, I'll just take that day, a day later or something. Um, because I think I'm out on, out on a limb here. It's I'm not making modules anymore. Uh, I'm thinking way out of the box and um, which is a good thing of course and we should have more inputs from the outside into our modular that makes it much much more interesting so those advanced noise modules are really interesting I think but I need to take a break from this uh, so uh, we just go to uh, other kind of effects distortion and stuff like that so that is going to be uh, the next step so um, this wasn't supposed to be a rambling video uh, I feel I've been rambling anyway but I just wanted to explain this that it turned out not so as I had thought as many times happens but uh, uh, hopefully I can get back to this we'll see um, but for now we leave this so what we have here is a tape loop and let's see how much we can see of this so there's two tape heads there is the tape head that comes uh, in this box and there is the this is actually the erase head sits there and I exchanged the erase head for a uh, the a tape head from another another one so I just picked the the playhead out of this one and put in there. The thought was to use one as a recorder and one as a play. And actually I wanted to have that one as a re uh, record and that one as play. But the way these circuits are made is that when you play press let me 
let's take this when I just press play there's of course only that head going down and when you press record you also get the erase head in this case which would be the uh, uh, record head so that worked th that would work but uh, let's see there's so here's the button so there's a button that when you press the record turns the play head into a record head by pressing this button so that's the uh, that was the error of this that I, I didn't think of that that I could pick both of these out and then the um, and then I could use uh, yeah so <laughs> because so I could have done this differently, but because one of the uh, boards is in here, and that is wanted to be the playhead, but when I press record, this one became the record, uh, and this one was the play. So I, uh, what I did now is I've taken them both out, so it just it's sitting loose here on the back. So the when I press the record, this button on this button on this board isn't pressed and that's and I've done loads of different other mods and stuff to get this to work it's not that complicated but uh, I'll go through that in a future episode if I ever find it interesting enough uh, I didn't do the PWM mod on this one so let's change the um, Let's change tape recorder and we will look at that. What you see is a voltage controlled uh, tape right now. Uh, so this is the mess. This is the circuit I've been working on in the modular advent calendar. If you follow that, uh, this is a new circuit. Part of this and a bit of that and a bit of other. So uh, right now, uh, is usually I have this pot connected between voltage and ground and I can turn that to uh, decide how much uh, this should turn but now I remove that and and instead added a uh, cable to an LFO which is doing this so if we go up a bit in speed I don't know if you can hear this we can turn this we also see the PWM there I will try to explain what I've done here. Um, first of all, I built this simple triangle waveform generator. Uh, one up amp and you get the triangle wave output there. This one is then connected to a, a comparator, technically. Uh, uh, up amp in a comparator uh, configuration. So, but instead of having a reference voltage and a uh, and a fixed voltage here so we on the negative pin for example we have uh, trying the triangle waveform in here so we actually don't have those two resistors we just have the triangle in there and on the other pin we have the CV input uh, and or a pot connected between voltage and ground to get the reference voltage and whatever voltage we get here uh, that so when the on this triangle waveform when we uh, raise the threshold it will get closer to the peaks and when we lower the threshold it will be closer to the uh, ground pin in this case 
or the negative rail so we will get that way we can get a, we can choose the width of the pulse by just changing the C, the voltage input of the threshold pin of the comparator uh, and of course if we have a CV input as you saw in the uh, in the previous clip then you change the the voltage all the time and therefore you get PWM pulse width modulation and then so you just take the output from the from the comparator uh, and you add that to the this same circuit that I showed in um, advent calendar door 7 I think it was I showed the, the, it was with a 555 timer circuit as well but so you get the PWM out from this one in there into this NPN transistor 3904 uh, which in turn uh, runs the motor so I'll try to make a better write up on this one because this is a bit uh, on the messy side and then I also did this Falstad simulation to tweak some parameters and get it right where I wanted it to be so I could get in the end a really all the way to the max on both uh, sp spectrums I'll show in a bit uh, just to go through this here we have the triangle oscillator and here you have this waveform output uh, I then run it through an inverted amplifier and this is to amplify the voltage a bit there's 398 millivolts and here we are up at 1.7 um, and invert it and then I go into a bias mixer where I add a negative signal and this is so I get the voltage all above uh, the zero line so I have that there and then we get into the CVPWM so this is just a comparator where we have uh, on the positive pin we have the triangle going in and on this pin we have either a CV input here with a resistor or you have a uh, pot like this so when we run this we see here that when we change this value we go we can go from maximum value to minimum value and I haven't toned in the resistance quite perfect yet but that way we can get really fast and really slow on the PWM so this circuit is a bit more complex than what I showed before but uh, just to get everything uh, working and of course we need the transistor out here as well which I haven't added <laughs> 